Greg Siri here with the people of manufacturing. On this episode of Machining 101, we're going to talk about the Sakuma horizontal mill and the fixture that Kenny Parton built. How you doing? What's up, Kenny? How's it going? Still breathing, man. First, what is a horizontal mill? A horizontal mill is just like a vertical mill, but the spindle goes horizontal, so it's parallel to the ground, and that actually allows your chips to fall down and get away from your material. So. On this, this is called a tombstone, right? Yes. This is a tombstone. It's bolted to your pallet. And this is basically your work surface as opposed to a table that you're used to seeing on a vertical. So tell us how you came up with this fixture design. Because you so, started off with a design, right? Of course. I mean, we were given a print to produce these parts from our engineering department. And they gave us some really tight tolerances for this whole little part that we're used to. It's a thousand and a half. So normally, we're used to five or ten thousandths for a total yeah. tolerance. Now I have a thousand and a half. So we really had to approach this differently than any other kind of part that we've had to make. So we actually worked on getting this two-sided tombstone so we can maximize the width of this work envelope and we got um, chick plate material instead of working with vices or even soft jaws because that maximized the square footage of available space to put more parts on this whole entire work surface. So this whole part was machined specifically for this part? Yes. So this was just a solid billet of cast jig plate. It's an aluminum cast material. And we cut in our grooves, drilled and tapped our holes so that way we could put in locating rails, attach our clamps, our talon grips on the sides, so that way we could get a lot of parts out of this one fixture. So it looks like the secret sauce on this is how it's fixtured and fastened in. Can you tell me a little bit about these fasteners? So we're using talon grips made by uh, Mighty Bite, and what they do is they dig into the material. They're really low profile, and they dig in with knife edges into the side of the material, so it's impossible to rip this part out. We're also using these OK Vice clamps, which the amount of holding force is astronomical. It's over 12,000 pounds of force to that clamp when your torque gets tight enough. It is insane. It's the highest clamping force that we've used on anything in the shop so far. So essentially, as you tighten this screw, it pushes this in and it wedges in yes, between there's, there? there's a wedge design that pushes these two hard steel jaws outward. They're serrated, so they're actually digging into the sides of the material as well. It makes it incredibly unlikely that no matter how aggressive we get machining this, that this part is going to get ripped out. So, what I'm hearing is you had this entire space to work with and had to make as many parts of these as possible, right? Absolutely. So, you utilized the fixture design combo with these different Mighty Bike clamps and locating rails to maximize this area so you're making the most amount of parts that you can off of this machine. Exactly. This one pallet can run for 45 minutes so an operator can go do another job, do a setup somewhere else. It frees up an operator from having to be here putting parts in and out of this over and over again. So 45 minutes for this thing to run by itself gets us a lot of parts at once. The machine is incredibly efficient just running by itself. So we're removing the human out of running the part, and they're only here every once in a while now. Gotcha. So your machine's always making money for you guys. Oh, absolutely. While we're here talking about this, the machine is machining more parts waiting for us. So it actually doesn't need to wait on us at all because we can be ahead of it. We can get this loaded and ready to go, send it in. Once that uh, those other parts are done, it'll switch and it'll just start machining what we just loaded, give us more done parts, and just keep going and going and going. Can we take a look? Absolutely. How do we turn this thing on? Well, there's an on button up here. Go ahead and press that. Oh, you got to go turn the breaker on. Ah. Remember when we turned the deuce on? on? Like it was yesterday. Perfect. There's a breaker on the back side of this machine. Go ahead and flip that breaker. I got this. All right. Ah. 
Okuma makes their own controller. And there's actually a PC inside of this control panel right here. Just like your laptop, just like your computer at home. It actually starts Windows. Huh. Which is pretty neat. So why does this controller use Windows and others don't? So this controller uses Windows and it takes advantage of an i7 processor, which is able to perform a lot of operations and buttons very quickly. So this is able to process a lot more code with a lot faster look ahead than most other machines. Gotcha. So how many tools can be held in this thing? So this machine starts with about 60 something, but we opted for an expandable solution and we have it configured for 146 tools. Wow. So you can just set it, forget it. Absolutely. Hit cycle start, your rock and roll button, and then you come out on this side and you have your parts. Exactly. That's so how it this machine has so many tools. We load what, every tool that you need for every job that you're going to run, and we leave it in there. Because we have so many tools, we don't have to worry about taking stuff out, presetting. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You just keep it in there and let it go. So my eyes immediately draw to the, the red line across the top that says, please open door. So go ahead and grab that you door. You so nicely, Akuma. Open it up. Inside, you'll notice the spindle is up there and it is horizontal. I think it's really critical to understand how the axes work on a horizontal mill. Okay, so we identified our spindle all the way up there, we said it's horizontal, and yep. so when you think machining and you think of the Z axis, like you're drilling something, well, it's the same thing. Just over here, I take my Z and I go positive, I'm going positive away from the spindle. So my work piece is moving for Z as opposed to the spindle coming down. So that's going away, this is coming towards, that's Z minus. So that's gotcha. going to be my Z, and then just as you would expect, the X and Y axis, my X goes left and right. So if I'm standing where I am now, and I'm looking at the workpiece, it makes it easier to understand. Because it's the same as standing in front of a vertical, right? When you stand in front of a vertical and you go X minus and X plus, and I stand here with this horizontal, I go X minus and X plus, it's the same thing. X minus and then spindle coming towards me. So that's my X axis. That's going to be a negative direction. This is a positive direction. And then Y minus is just the spindle moving down. Y positive is the spindle moving up. Gotcha. However, horizontals are really cool in that they got a cool other trick. You have a B axis. It is an B integrated fourth axis. So this entire workpiece spins, which allows me to get access to at least three sides of a part. Parts just in there spinning. So what that allows me to do is if I need to drill a hole or do something here, I bring that spindle over and I can access the side of the part, whereas that's something I can't gotcha. do on a regular vertical without the addition of a fourth axis. So the biggest difference between a horizontal and a vertical machine is that you can have a little bit more reach to get different sides of your part that you might have to have another operation for? Yes, absolutely. Another setup. You may need, need more setups. You may need more complicated ways to hold that part. You introduce error by holding the part more times. Here, I can hit three sides of a part in one setup. If you're interested in joining our apprenticeship at Sunny's The Car Wash Factory, please contact us at info at tpomft.com. So the biggest feature and benefit that I've seen in using a horizontal fixture and a horizontal setup is for high volume production and then lights out operations because you can walk away and then make parts elsewhere while you're making money on this machine. Absolutely. This machine stays running. hit this rock and roll button to show you how all these things move inside this machine. Rock and roll.
lightning fast, man. Can you tell me a little bit about the speed and feed on this piece? So this is a uh, three-inch base mill, and we're going over 3,000 surface feet per minute, and we are pushing these inserts to the max. I'm pushing 12,000 per flute on this base mill. So for every tooth, which there was what, five on there? There's five on this. Cool. So the significance of that, what, what did it used to be before you started using this tool? So we used to approach this job very differently. We used a half inch end mill and we went through it quickly, but the, the metal removal rate has been tripled because we're able to utilize the horsepower that the machine has. We're maxing out the horsepower, almost maxing out the speed that this machine can run and cut material at. It's enabled us to make these parts three times faster than we used to. It smells like money. Definitely. On this episode of Machining 101, we learned everything that we could learn, well not everything, the basics of horizontal milling. You got to see a setup, a fixture plate, and you got to see a three inch base mill rip through aluminum at lightning speed. Can't ask for much more. Are you the FNG in the shop? The fancy new guy? Well, I am too. Follow my journey and watch Machining 101, where Kenny teaches me everything I need to know about machining and manufacturing. Visit us at thepeopleofmanufacturing.com for all you FNGs out there. This episode of Machining 101 was brought to you by Sunny's the Car Wash Factory. Sunny's is the largest conveyorized car wash manufacturer in the world. For more information, visit sunnysdirect.com. Thanks, Kenny. No problem, man.